What's going on guys? It's your boy Fox back in the house. I know I'm a little bit closer, but reasons. Anywho, so I just got done watching the second episode of High School Prodigies Have It Easy Even in Another World. This is episode two. I'm going to be doing reviews for this show because I actually really like the show and the second episode just solidified it even more. So in this episode, uh, we are dealing with, we mostly deal with uh, Saratobi, Saratobi Shinobu, that is the journalist or the ninja of the group, and we're dealing with Sanada Masato. Masato is the entrepreneur of the group or the merchant as, uh, I can't even remember his name, the main, the other, the, the top, uh, politician it was called. He calls him the merchant. I'm pretty sure that's because they don't know what an entrepreneur is. But they have gone into town with, uh, Winona, that is the one of the village uh, leaders, her son, they went into town with him to try and secure some more goods because, you know, winter and all that is heading up and they need to, you know, they need supplies, you know, you got to live, you got to eat and all that. And and we find out they go to a town called Dor Dormut. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that name and all that. And there is only one trading company uh, in that entire city. And the reason for that is there's a guy, the owner of the place is called Jacoy. He has pretty much bribed uh, the mayor in to not letting anyone else get, in, uh, get a business permit to allow them to operate in the city, uh, you know, legally and all that. Now, as far as a black market, I'm pretty sure there is one. We just haven't come in contact with it yet. But yeah, the uh, the owner of this, uh, I can't pronounce the name of it. It's, it's, some of the names are just really hard for me to say. But long story short, the only trading, the only company that allows you to sell stuff to them uh, is paying off the mayor so that no one else can get a business permit to operate and all that. So when they go there, they try to sell all their goods and all that, and obviously they're getting ripped off and not getting any good prices or anything like that. So Saratobi, not Saratobi, uh, Sanada, uh, I'm just gonna call him Masato. Masato gets upset about this and he's like, look, and the son's name is Elk. E-L-C-H, -E Elk, I'm pretty sure. But he gets upset about this, he's like, look, uh, let me handle this business trip, and by the end, by a week, I'll have, the, I'll have that place shut down. We're gonna run them out of business. And he, he gets straight to it, like, I think by the time this episode, only a span of like two days have passed, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm, at least one day has passed and all that, and uh, Masato is, he shows why he is known as the top uh, entrepreneur in the world or the world they, they came from and all that because he quickly uh, amasses, a, he, he quickly gets a business permit from the mayor. That is also why Sh uh, Shinobu is there. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, Sar Saratobi Shinobu. That's why Shinobu is there. She's a ninja, but she's also a journalist. So the whole time, that we're seeing Masato and Elk and all that, she's out collecting information, getting intel, like a journalist or a ninja would. And she manages to find, and that's how we find out that the mayor is being bribed by Jacoy and his company to not let anyone else have a business part, uh, business permit. So, son, uh, Masato goes in there. He qu he pretty much blackmails him, and he gets he he ends up getting a business permit, and they end up starting the Elm uh, Trading Company. And what he does is he goes into like a local bar or pub or whatever, and he talks to other people who try to sell goods. What he does is he comes up with it's called a cosign uh, a cosignment sale, and pretty much what it is. I looked it up. Now you can go. I did like a crash course on this. You can go look it up for yourself and make sure you're real versed and on it. But quick, some quick explanation is a cosignment is someone brings you have you have a company. Someone brings you their goods. You sell the goods. You take a profit, and then the rest of it goes to the person who brought you the goods in the first place. Now. What he tells them is, he's like, look, he's like, if you, it's like, if you come to me, I'll take 20% of the profit and the rest goes to you. But he was like, but if you help me man the stations, like the, the shops and all that, I'll only take 10% of it. So he pretty much told them that, and they were like, at first they didn't know what 10% was, but then he explained it. And he was like, look, if you have some, if you have an item or a carpet, he, he, went, like, he was talking about carpet, he's like, as an example, he's like, you have a carpet that's worth 450. He's like, you bring it to, if you bring it to us, we'll probably sell it for 400. 
He said, after we sell it, I take 40, which is 10%, and then you get the other 360. And they were like, we can make, and to them, that's a lot. Well, I mean, it is a lot. Because they're like, most of the time, they're usually getting ripped off. Because usually if they sell it to Jacoy and his company, they would just buy it from them and only maybe give them like 150. This is like a crash course on what he did. I, trust me, I'm by no means am I like the most savvy businessman or whatever, but it's really neat. So not only, so after he tells them the deal, they're like, okay, cool, can we tell other people? And he's like, yeah, because that was his whole plan to begin with, to get everyone, all the other merchants to come to him and not go to over to the uh, enemy's establishment and all that. So he ends up gaining, all, he ends up stocking up on merchandise for free, and he pretty much ends up getting um, uh, uh, employees, and he's not really paying them because it, either way it goes, uh, they're only making what they would have made had uh, they're only making what they would have made even if they helped him out or not. Well, they they would have took like a, a bigger percentage cut, but still, he pretty and and Elk is just amazed by all this. And also, uh, this episode we get introduced to two characters. Uh, one of the new characters is a little girl. She must be protected. Her name is Rue. She is a Neko cat girl. She's very young. She looks like maybe like eight, eight or nine or ten years old. And uh, she she's either a slave or an orphan. Uh, I'm going with orphan. And she is obsessed with money. She wants to make her own money. She wants to be able to, uh, you know, do for herself. So she comes up to. Uh, Masato, after they leave the Jacoy's establishment the first time, she's like, no, she's like, can you teach me how to make money and all that? And she stares uh, Masato straight in the eyes and he looks back at her and he can, he's like, he sees potential in her or greed in her eyes. And he's like, okay, that's fine. Um, I'll teach you, just stick close and you know, keep up. And that's how we get introduced through. She's very cute, I, I like her. Um, I'm actually a little bit afraid about her um, because she's really obsessed with money and that's not the problem. I just don't want it to become like, that's like, that's like her only gimmick. Like she only loves money and there's nothing else, there's no other depth or anything to her. But other than that, I like her character. She, the animation for her and all that was really nice and everything, but so yeah, so. Masato is doing what he does best and that's being an entrepreneur. He has pretty much amassed a giant company in less than like 24 or 48 hours. It's crazy. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, Jacoy is hearing about the, the new company that's starting up, but he's just so, he's so used to just everything going his way. He's he doesn't care. He's like, he's like, oh, I don't, I don't care about no other small company. Uh, they'll run themselves into the ground soon. And then also, he's like, he's like, then he's like, he's like, what am I paying the mayor for? Because they shouldn't have a business permit to begin with. But he's like, whatever, I don't care. Because he's, because even though at this point, even though uh, Masato has amassed this company that's growing very, very rapidly, Jacoy just, he doesn't care. He's like, whatever. And um. And after uh, he sets up, after Masato uh, sets up shop and it goes well, they they sell. They're, they're selling like, like crazy, like, and because it's all about location and prices. He is cheaper than the competition, and he's also closer to people's normal routes. That in and of itself is very, very business uh, savvy, and it's it's just for the new people. It's more convenient and it's cheaper. You're gonna win. It's the same thing with Amazon. Uh, and like, you know, going to like Best Buy or something like it was like, yeah, Amazon and Best Buy have the same items, but be Amazon might be a little bit cheaper, but also you don't have to leave your house. You can get it. And depending on the item, you can get it the same day that you order in. Bang, it's right there at your at your front door. Whereas you got to go to all the way down to Best Buy, wherever that might be and you know, pick up the item, which might be more expensive, which it usually is. But anywho. Yeah, while all this is going on, uh, we cut back over to the village. That's where that's where everyone else is at. Uh, the doctor, the swordsman, the magician. I can't. I, it's a lot of names to remember. I'm sorry, I can't remember all the names at once. But they're back there, just you know, doing what they do, just taking care of the village, helping out the best way they can, and all that. The magician is entertaining the children. Uh, they're back there. Uh, the politician is back back in the kitchen making uh, mayonnaise. And also, this one thing. This. 
Everyone in this world is really obsessed with like mayonnaise. It, Cause I, I get it, it's a whole new thing. They, they've never had it before and it's really good. But like, like dude, I like mayonnaise. Like, not like that, but I mean, the way they're consuming mayonnaise in this series, it's really disturbing and it kind of makes my stomach hurt a little bit because mayonnaise should not be eaten in the way that they're eating these mayonnaise, this mayonnaise. And it's selling, and they're selling the mayonnaise now too. It's going like that. And then actually, after they sell the mayonnaise, they have one jar left. And that's we get introduced to the new, another new character. His name is Klaus. He is the leader of the of the sailing merchants, uh, Sea Serpent. And he had heard about Masato's new company, and he was curious to see what was going on. And Masato, being him, being the entrepreneur that he is, he has persuaded uh, the uh, Sea Serpents to now start trading with him. Uh, I'm pretty sure exclusively because there's. As far as I know, there's only two business, two trading companies in the whole city. Elm's company and then I, Jacoy's <clears throat> company that I, I can't even pronounce. I don't, I don't even want to try. So yeah, and after <clears throat> after Jacoy gets worried about uh, the sea serpent uh, switching sides, that's when it's like, okay, look, we're going to go to war and we're going to, we're going to, you know, now he doesn't entail what they're gonna do, but we get a little bit of an exposition about what they're gonna do from uh, Masato to, at the end of this episode. So Masato says that, yep, they're gonna open up shop right next to us, and they're just gonna end up buying everything from us and selling it uh, for whatever. It's not, there's not even a point to make a profit. Now I don't know how that would benefit Jacoy, because once again, I I can't, I'm not a businessman like that. Uh, but so. So that's that's pretty much how it is. Uh, but we cut to Masato looking at a group of people outside of their uh, hotel room and all that, and he's like, "These are the people that are gonna help me kill Jacoy and his business." Now I don't know what that really entails. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna actually murder him, but I'm pretty sure he's going to probably murder his uh, his character, even though most people know he's a jerk anyway. So they don't. I don't. I don't know. So yeah, this episode was really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to really enjoy it. I feel like we're going to learn a little bit about everything, like a little bit about politics, a little bit about entrepreneurship, uh, about science and all that. Because each one of these, I'm pretty sure each one of these characters is going to get like, not their own dedicated episode, but we're going to get like, if we do it like this, where we got Masato and Shinobu, you know, we might get like the, uh, the doctor and the swordsman or the, um, the magician and the uh, the mechanic, not the mechanic, uh, the inventor and all that. I don't know. I'm really excited for it. Um, it's really hard for me not to just go and pick up the light novel, but I'm gonna wait till the uh, season is over and then I'm gonna go pick it up. But guys, uh, tell me what you thought about this episode. I like, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Rue is very cute, kawaii. She must be protected at all times. And speaking of kawaii, if you want, if you like this shirt that I've been wearing. Or if you see some, or if you seen some of the other shirts that I've worn from this company, go to kawaiiwaru.com. They are the sponsors of this video. Uh, use my code kawaiifox. It'll get you 10% off your purchase. And they always got deals and stuff going on, so you can probably catch some of their items on some really, really cheap stuff. So you know, get to it while you can. But guys, t uh, tell me what you thought about this episode. Did you like it? Did you not? Have you seen the show? If you haven't seen the show, I don't know how you got to this this review. Honestly, because it's episode two, but you know, do the stuff that I normally tell you to do like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications for when I drop more videos, and actually check the notifications because YouTube has been tripping and not notifying people when I release more content, which just makes me utterly and truly sad. But with all that being said, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, night, or wherever you may be at, and it's your boy Fox.